Hello, everyone. Welcome to this video. My name is Pascal Defoe, and uh, today I would like to talk to you about the investor's psychology, something that any investor out there should always remember and apply. Uh, the reason I would like to talk about this is because many of us stumbled on the, um, you know, investing journey without really being prepared of, you know, truly becoming an investor. You know, you don't just become an investor because you have money uh, available that you could put into something. You don't just, you know, become an investor. You learn to become an investor because there's a real mindset, there's a real psychology that you need to have. And if you don't have it, you need to cultivate, you know, you need to really grow that mindset before you could become a successful uh, investor, a successful entrepreneur. Um, the, uh, the last two years with the, um, with the COVID, and uh, the quarantine and the confinement has pushed um, a lot of us to get into investing by accident. Many actually got into it by accident. Can you imagine that just those last two years, over $170 billion was made in the uh, multi-level marketing just because people were home, bored, they didn't have any job anymore. They only had the internet to use to try and uh, uh, make ends meet. So that is how many became what they call themselves investors without truly understanding what investing is about. So it is important that you take the time if you have some and if you can find some to educate yourself what becoming or being an investor is truly. Because without the right mindset, you're setting yourself for failure. Now, this presentation is inspired from Morgan Housel's book, The Psychology of Money, all right? So it's only after reading the book and, you know, um, and, and, and going over uh, the uh, the um, going over uh, the advice or the lessons that are uh, uh, in that book that I you know chose to make this short presentation in order to share you know the uh, the, the the most relevant uh, uh, lesson that we can get from the book and uh, thank you to uh, you know uh, Morgan Housels for the work that he put in writing that book. The first thing or the first lesson you should always know and remember is that investing always involves luck and risk. A lot of people only see the risk part and they say, oh, you know what, I'm, I'm, I'm willing to take the risk, but they tend to forget the luck part. It's not just because you've acknowledged the risk that it means it will become a success. Because even if you can manage the risk, even if there's no risk, and there's no investment with, without risk, even if you could manage to take the risk out of your investment, it still does not guarantee that you will be successful. Because it also takes sometimes, you know, to be lucky. So the success of your investment is never solely based on your action. Never. So you got to be able to not just look at one single example of one person that became successful and think that, oh, this is the way to go. You got to look rather at, you know, global trends to say, oh, you know what? I think I should go in this direction. You should really look at global trends. A good example is the blockchain. The blockchain is a global trend. When you look at all the technologies and all the products that are being developed around the blockchain technology with the DeFi, with the cryptos, with the NFTs, with, with uh, you know, 
all the metaverse and all the stuff that is being developed, that makes it a global trend and not an isolated case. And usually with those trends also come scams. So you got to be able to identify what is a scam and what is a true project. Successful people almost always had a little push or maybe some luck around, you know, along the way that made them what they are today. So don't just look at successful people and only see the part where they succeeded because you never know unless maybe you read their book and even when they write their book, they don't tell you the entire story, right? So you never know all the hurdles that they had to go over and what has worked for them may not work for you today. What has worked for John may not work for Peter. And so on. What has worked for Mary may not work for Jane. It is extremely important that you understand that as well as it involves risk, it also involves some luck. The second thing you should always remember is that failure is part of the journey. When you invest, see it as a journey. And if you see it as a journey, the journey is just as rewarding as the final objective, the final result you're trying to reach. If you invest into something and everything goes well and you never really get into you know, some emotional uh, uh, feelings where the thing doesn't work at one point, then it works, then it doesn't work, and then it finally works, then you will never truly remember it as a beautiful journey because everything was just too easy. Can you actually imagine that even successful investor lose more than they win? They tend to lose more than they win. And the key here is that whenever they win, they win big and they can manage to lose only very little when they are wrong. So when they are right in their investment, they win big. But when they are wrong, they lose very little. There is no world champion out there that could get to the top without getting some blows. Never. You don't just know it because you only see the tip of the iceberg when they become successful. But you don't know all the hassle, all the troubles they had to go through in order to become what they are today or what we all see. No, it's not an easy journey. It's not an easy journey. And never think that you can account for every single scenario of what, you know, in, in, in any investment or in any project. If you do your due diligence, you'll probably, you know, kind of cover all, you know, most of the aspect, but there's always that one or two those one or two aspects that you will never think of and that will cause you some troubles. So be ready to be wrong. It's normal to be wrong. It's natural. It's human to be wrong. You will make mistakes and you will learn from them. It is normal to be wrong. And that's actually the best way of learning. Some people tend to even learn better from mistakes than from advice. So the good investor knows when to take calculated risk on good investment with great potential. Not investing or thinking that everything is a scam or, you know, oh no, I don't want to go in there can only assure you of one thing that you will never lose, but then you will never win either. Therefore, diversification is the key because you don't wanna you know, go into one investment at a time and put all your funds in that investment because if it goes wrong, then you just lost everything. Rather, you wanna make sure you diversify. You diversify in different industries so that 
when you're wrong, you haven't lost all of your capital. And if you did your due diligence properly, you know that you may be wrong on most of those investments, but the ones that you will be right on will keep you going. You got to avoid compulsive greed. This is the lesson number three. Avoid compulsive greed. Even with professional investor, cupidity is a serious problem. What does that mean? That means whenever they find something that seems to be working, they keep pumping money and funds into it as it would never fail. As a good investor, you got to know to stop and be happy with, with what you've already earned. you got to be satisfied with what you've already got. So going all in or reinvesting all what you've already earned is usually the path to great or greater losses. No success lasts forever. The same way the summer only lasts a few months. No success lasts forever. The wheel always spins, spins, spins. In any projects you go into, you always got a plan to take your initial capital out with some profit. And then whatever is left as profit in there, you could use it to keep growing it. Going all in, even on the best investment or what you feel to be the best investment is a very bad idea. Very, very bad idea. We got to know when to stop. We got to know when to be satisfied with whatever we got. Lesson number four, compounding, compounding, and compounding. The power of compounding is just incredible, and every investor should compound. Albert Einstein called the compounding effect the eighth wonder of the world. Now, imagine this. You know what a snowball is. A snowball starts from the top of the mountain like a little rock, a little piece of rock you could actually hold between your two fingers. And then it start rolling down the mountain. And as it goes, it collects other little snow ball or snow powder. And the, you know, the more it goes over time, the bigger it gets. The more it goes, the bigger it gets until at the bottom of the mountain, what you get is an avalanche. And we know how powerful an avalanche could be. We know how destructive an avalanche could be. Compounding your investment will create a similar effect, a similar snowball effect. It is time bound. So don't be surprised if you don't see huge results compounding just for a few months or years. Because the, the true power of the compounding effect, you see it at the end when your results start going exponential. So this means you got to learn not to give up too early. If you give up too early, then you'll never get it. Can you imagine a snowball from the top of the mountain if it stops before getting to the bottom of the mountain? then you'll never get the avalanche. You'll get maybe some powder, like, uh, you know, like there was just some wind. No, the biggest, the strongest, the most powerful power of an avalanche is at the bottom of the mountain. So you want to make sure you stick to your investment all the way to the bottom of your mountain. Lesson number five, savings. No investor can build wealth without saving. It is better to save a little bit more often than try to save a big chunk further down. 
Because when you save a big chunk down, you've lost all the compounding effect you could have done. Whereas if you start saving a little bit every week, every month, you get that compounding effect. And it's actually less, you know, uh, it's actually, uh, you, you, you feel it a lot less compared to if you have to come up with a big amount of money at once. So spend less and save and care less about what other thing, because at the end of the day, time will tell who was right. Now, now that we know how, what we should do in order to build wealth, it is important in this lesson number six to know how to stay rich and how to keep that wealth. The skills that you apply when building wealth do not always work for keeping that wealth, right? So when you're building wealth, you got to have the courage, the audacity to try things. But when you become rich and when you've built some wealth, you got to learn to be humble because you have to plan ahead as what goes up always comes down at one point. So that business that you are in will never be at the top like, you know, uh, you, you, you could think. We know, we know great companies where people have invested because they, 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 they seemed like they would never go down and yet they did. We've seen recessions in this world. And we've seen investor that got taken down because of the recessions. So you've got to plan the recessions. You've got to plan the recession. And again, the diversification is a key in that case because recession usually would not affect the entire industry like all different types of industry together at the same time and if you've diversified properly you would not have all your eggs in one basket you should not be afraid of recession you should plan with them and always remember that even the best project they stumble sometimes they will stumble and come back up sometimes they will stumble and fail completely Lesson number seven, do not wear your wealth like a hat. The best way to destroy your hard-earned wealth is to buy stuff you don't need. We see that all the time. We see wealthy people um, after a few years get broke. Building wealth is a process and it should not be worn like a hat. How many famous boxers or famous, uh, you know, uh, you know, celebrity from from sport or even from from the music industry, do we know that have earned millions of dollars just to find themselves broke today? How many? I don't want to name any, but I'm sure you know them. Don't we know this famous boxer who? Who, who was earning like tens of millions of dollars per fight, who is now broke. You don't need unnecessary toys. You don't need unnecessary toys. The wealth that you build is not for buying luxury mansions or luxury cars or boats or plane that you don't need. What it buys you is the time to do the things you like. It's the time to be with those you love. It's the time to be with your family because life is short. You got to enjoy life. For those who work nine to five, they know exactly what I'm talking about because you never have time to do things you like. 
because you're always on the go. You come home, you eat, you sleep, you then, you know, the morning, the next morning, you're on the road again. Fancy cars, boats, houses do not buy others respect. They're just the best way to go back to start because they are the best way to, 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 to just throw away all that wealth that you built. Now, many investors tend to look back in the past to try and see how they should invest today. History teaches us lessons, but we tend to have a very selective memory we select what to remember, but that's very dangerous because we end up remembering the black swan. Seeing a black swan is an exceptional thing. It doesn't happen all the time. So when you see one, don't think all the swan are black, no. And therefore you should not base your investment on the black swan. You should not base your investment on things that happen exceptionally. The only thing you should remember with a black swan, for example, is that the, everything in investment is unpredictable. Anything can happen. So a single event in the history, a single event in the history should not tell you how to invest. We know how things are different from what they were in the past and today. Look at how fast the technology is evolving. Today, we're talking about the blockchain industry. Today, people become millionaires overnight because they purchased a shit coin, you know, a few months back. And now that shit coin, for whatever reason, jumped in price and then they became millionaire. You, you can then not compare past economy with what we have today. You should always remember in lesson nine that you are changing. Very important to remember that and plan ahead. You shouldn't be living like there's no tomorrow. Can you imagine if you would spend everything now, the future you will be very, very unhappy. But at the same time, if you don't spend at all, just focusing on accumulating, you'll live a miserable life. A very miserable life. Why would you accumulate without enjoying life? But if you do that, one thing I can tell you is that your descendants will love you though. They'll love you because you know, they won't have to work. And if they're smart, they'll actually grow that wealth even more. On a more serious note, you gotta find the right balance and live a happy life. You don't need a mansion, but if you need a bigger house for yourself and to make people around you happier, go for it. It doesn't have to be built on uh, acres and acres and acres. It doesn't have to have 50, 50 bedrooms in it or 40 bathrooms that you will never use. Why? Why would you do that? You don't need to have, uh, I don't know, a, a, a $500,000 car. You don't. You don't. That is not money well spent. However, if you can invest in a way that 10 generations down the road can look back and say, oh my God, grandpa did a great job. Then you've done your job. And a very key lesson for lesson number 10 is not to follow the herd. Never follow the herd. It is very important to think twice before you follow other investors, especially right now, where we see new projects come here and there, like, you know, you, you, you wake up tomorrow and there's already this new 
technology and, and, and everybody is going into that direction and you just follow. Be very careful. Financial situations are different and one should always assess the situation, their very personal situation and decide for themselves. Because every investor has its own, his, his or her own goals, which may not align with your goals. Maybe they have a huge capital and they can take risk that your small capital may not allow you to take. Some investor know that some investment opportunities are risky and they're willing to go in short term, whereas you, you always think long term. So when they go in, they get profit, they come out and you, you go in, but you're planning long term. And before you know it, that project goes down and your capital is locked in and gone with it. Do not rush. Do not rush. Especially now, in the time we live in right now, if you miss this project, it's not the end of the world. It's not the end of the world. By rushing, you have more chances to make mistakes. Do not rush. If you miss this one, there's another one that's going to, uh, that's going to come. So not a big deal. If you miss this one, it's fine. Just sit back, relax. Look after the other projects that you already got and just wait for the next one. So these are the 10 lessons that I wanted to share with you, inspired from the uh, psychology of money from Morgan Housel. I hope you, um, you enjoyed this presentation. I hope you will get something out of it. And I hope that it will really help you on your investment journey. Thank you very much, bye-bye.